Hello and welcome back to the railway. We've just got to get this B12 turned around so she can pick up the coaches from the station. But firstly, we'll bring her to a stop here so we can change points 18 and 17. And now we move off again onto the turntable to a gentle stop. This B12 is from the fabulous RS29 local passenger train set. This set was later to become known as the Holiday Express, which I think is a far better name, and the picture on the box really is terrific. This set came with an overall Super 4 track. It was available from 1963 to 1965, and doesn't appear to have made it into the Triumph period in 1966. And there she is, all turned around now. Now we'll just let her go off and collect the coaches from the station, and we'll close points number 18. So there she goes, Triumph Railways R150 with R39 tender, the B12. She was available, as we said earlier, from 1963 right through until 1969 when she was no longer available in black. In 1970, she appeared in LNER Apple Green livery. We'll open points number 11 and go back slowly over the points and pick up the coaches. I think we can safely say we've got those. In the set, there was just the two coaches, R626 and R627, the composite and the brake. Now I've added the buffet car, just to make up the rake a little. And we'll close points 11 behind her. Whilst these crimson and cream composite and brake coaches were available in the RS29 set, they were also available separately, along with the buffet car, which was R628. They had a relatively short life in the range, from 1963 to 1965. The composite and brake also featured in another set, the RS47, the Monster Double. By the early 60s, sales of the Black Princess models were beginning to dwindle. Trying's answer was the B12, a business-like looking model. It had no valve gear on the outside, which meant it was much cheaper to produce. Coming past the station now, up to points number nine, the double crossover, and over she comes, all of those coaches behaving perfectly. And we'll just close those points behind her, and around she comes onto this great long shot. Just watch her as she comes into this bend up to the points. The swing on the front end of the body is a huge. Around she comes. And we'll close points number four. Yeah, that nose swing as she comes around the curve is quite something. It did cause a few problems when I test ran it, working out what I was going to do with her on the track for this video. And there she goes, up the incline. And as usual, we'll bring her to a stop and we'll have a closer look at her. Starting at the front here, we can see we've got the standard Triumph decoupling and we've got the metal buffers and we've got quite a bit of detail where the buffer shank meets the buffer beam. Not much detail on the buffer beam apart from this hook here. We can see the smoke box door has quite a bit of detail moulded into it. There's no number there. And this is where the chassis comes to the bodywork. We'll talk about how that secures to the body in a moment. It's got a moulded handrail and some pipe work along the sides here. And this little wheel there, I don't know what that is, some sort of valve perhaps. And these lovely steps at either end here, and these are quite often missing when you find these. And the number here is applied with a transfer to the side of the cabinet. It's quite fine, just a little bit beginning to come away there. This was the first model in Trans range to have fluted coupling rods right from the very beginning of its time. It also had see-through wheels from the beginning and it had steel tyres on these. We can just see here the magnet here, which gave the magnesium to the steel tyre, which helps it stick to the track. We'll have a look at that in a second. And also we have this space here, we can clearly see straight underneath the boiler. Moving on to the cab here, we can see we've got handrails moulded in here on the edges. We've got unglazed windows here and here, and one in the front. We've got a brass whistle and two brass safety valves. I'm not sure what these items are here along the side of the boiler and we do have a hatch moulded into the roof. Every time I see this tender, this coal makes me smile. It's just so crude, the lumps are so large, it's excellent. We've got some water fillers at the back here and plenty of suspension detail down here. They really seem to have gone to town on this. I'm looking from the back of the tender here. We have a handrail moulded along the back here and we've got lamp irons along the bottom edge here. The buffer beam very similar to the front buffer beam on the locomotive. Not much detail apart from where the shanks meet the buffer beam. Running along the side here, 
We've got a handrail moulded at the back edge there, and we've got this lovely lining continues along the tender, just like the locomotive. Some of the totem has begun to rub away, not too bad though. And there's another handrail moulded on the edge here. I'm just going to take the locomotive and tender off, and then we'll have a look at them on the workbench. I'm just on the hooker there, we'll lift the locomotive off, and then we'll take the tender away also. There is a fair bit of in-cab detail here, although it's not painted of course, and this set was issued with crew, although I'm not quite sure where to put them, they don't look quite right when they're in there. There's quite a bit of detail here on the inside of the tender, and we can see here there's some damage to the body where somebody's over tightened the screw in the past. Looking at the tender a bit more closely, we see she has spoked wheels, which I think is quite a nice touch. Turning over and looking underneath, we can see that the centre wheel is flanged. This was the first time in Triang's range of models that one of their tenders had flanged wheels on the centre. Quite a nice touch. Well, we'll just put that down and we'll have a look at the locomotive. Now we can see the other side of her. And the detail is different on each side. So on the other side we have a, a pipe running along here. Just turn it around. See, it's marginally different and we've got some sort of compressor over here. And the decals are pretty good on both sides. There we go. And we can see here I've lifted the body off. And this is the metal plate that pokes through the chassis at the front to secure the body. So if I just put that back on. A little bit fiddly. There we go. And then we'll turn it around. and the screw would go back in here. We'll just nip this screw up really gently. We don't want to cause any more damage. There we go. Couldn't work out how to get that screw in on camera, so I'll just cut to that. Now I am going to put the crew in, but also I'm not going to do that on camera. And we can see I've got the crew fitted there. I'm we'll just turn her around. It's a bit of a tight fit in there. I'm sure they'll be fine. But as we come around, we can see that back drive wheel with the magnet just situated behind it. We'll just point it out, just there. So we're gonna have a look at Maghesion now. This system was first developed for the TT range. It was correctly pronounced as Magnetesion, and it found its way onto the 00 scale models in around 1962. Here is an old 060 chassis. This has Maghesion fitted. If I lift up the chassis, the track will come with it. There we go. And you can feel it sticking to the track. And listen to it click in. So it's quite a strong pull. So the magnet's situated between the drive wheels. If I just take out this screw, we'll take off this connecting rod. Definitely seen better days this chassis. I've been experimenting with quartering on this. So pull this off here. And we'll just pull off this wheel. There we go. So we can see the magnet just installed in the chassis here. And that will just pass the magnetism through the drive wheel, through the tire on the drive wheel, down to the track, and improve its traction. I'm not sure whether there is some equation whereby if the magnetism is too great, it causes more strain on the motor and defeats the whole point of the exercise, but it does seem to work quite well. Probably just worth pointing out that the Magnahesion will only work on steel track. On regular nickel track, you won't get any, any help at all from it. I'm just getting her back on the rails here. See if we can get it coupled up. Hook up the tender. Fine. And a little power. I think we'll just sit back and let that run for a moment or two, and then we'll have a closer look at the coaches.
and down the incline she comes and we'll bring her along the bottom here to a gentle stop and then we'll have a quick look at the coaches and we're going to do this handheld today. The crew seem to be perfectly in control here so I think we'll move on and have a look at the composite coach and this had a catalogue number of R626 it has a running number of 15865 and we can see through the windows there's great detail there and we've got the handrail printed on the glazing it really is a good effect moving on down towards the, the buffet car here and we're going to have a look at the, the detailing between the coaches there's the corridor connections there this is the same on most of Triang's Mark 1 style coaches they share the same chassis and here we have the buffet coach running number 1825 with a catalogue number of 628 and again the tables seem to be set for lunch which is quite nice the windows are wearing a little bit you can see the paint rubbing off a little there looking from above here the detailing on the roof is quite extensive the buffet car is the only one of these Mark 1 coaches to have different roof detailing and moving on to the brake coach here got a running number of 35024 and had a catalogue number of 627 moving down through the coach we can see the seating detail through the window the detail around the guards door is excellent and I love the bars in the window at the back here in the guards compartment I'm going to leave you this week with page 17 of the 1964 catalogue it shows the crimson and cream coaches we've just been looking at but also shows another two liveries available on the same chassis if you look back again next week we'll have a look at something from a similar period goodbye now and thanks again for watching